Hello my friends, welcome to day two of the virtual violin play along practice. It's lovely to see you here again today. So let's go ahead, get your violin and let's get started. <laughs> Starting on A, here is your A. Yesterday by playing some open strings with long bows. So can I suggest you check your bow hold straight away here today? So your thumb is bent, your middle finger is opposite your thumb, you've got those two gaps between your index finger and your middle finger and your ring finger and your pinky and your pinky is on the side edge and on the wooden part of your bow. So let's play four times on each of the strings and we're going to play from the G string up to the E and back to the G. Ready? And... Yesterday we did some bow exercises. Let's do those again now, shall we? Let's first move your bow up and down and make your wrist really flexible. That's it. Make it into really, really nice waves like that. Relax your thumb, relax your fingers. Keep breathing as well when you do that. Lovely job. Next, let's do our windscreen wipers. There we go. Feel that shift in weight of your bow. There. I really feel it in my pinky now. And when it tips over this way, I can really feel the bow leaning here on my index finger. Pinky. Index finger. Pinky. Index finger, lovely job. Let's hold the bow upright. And we're going to do some crawling. We're going to crawl just like a little spider all the way up to the point of the bow. So go slowly. Touch the point of the bow and then step by step we're going to go back. See if you can manage that. 
and that. That promotes good independent work of your fingers because of your both fingers both need to work together and independently as well and that's a really good exercise for that. There we go. Once you go back to the heel of the bow, try and find that nice bow hold again that you had a moment ago. Finish, finish your crawling if you haven't yet done that. Take your time. There we are. Good, then find that nice bow hold again. And this time we're going to do our open string bowing one more time. And just like we did yesterday, we're going to really think about the tone that you make. So uh, when you're a little bit further advanced, your teacher has perhaps talked to you about tone colours or quality of tone. And we're really going to start listening out to the sound that you make. So we're going to start, let's start on the E string this time and we'll do four times on E, four times on A, D and G and so on. Then we we'll go back up. Uh, and I really want you to work on your tone quality. So listen out to what your sound is like. Three, four. to you. Stop the bow for a moment and see if you can drop your elbow down in your shoulder because that shaking is usually a sign of tension in your upper arm. So if you can release that tension in your upper arm that will not maybe immediately stop the shaking but it will make it less and as you progress you might learn to feel when there's tension in your arm and then release it. So over time that should get better. Now let's go from the G string four times back up to the E because we've only got halfway with our exercise, haven't we? So here we go on G and make your bows long. <laughs> to polish that bowing is always a good thing isn't it so now let's work on our left hand a little bit so find your proper left hand position remember we talked about that finger line yesterday so make sure your finger line is level with the E string again what is a finger line again your finger line is that crease here where your finger is attached to your hand so put it level with the E string there your elbow comes under the violin. So yesterday we did this elbow swing. Actually, let's do that again today. And when you play uh, on the various different strings, you can see how your elbow might guide your fingers across the strings. Now, in a minute, we're going to play on the A string. So we're leaving our elbow straight underneath the violin. So you shouldn't actually see your elbow here, but it should definitely not be sticking out on that side. All right, so now we're going to play our four fingers. So we're playing every note twice and we're playing on the A string, still with long bows. And we're going to play A, one, two, three, four, three, two, one, zero. Here we go, and.
lovely. Now this time we're going to place our B on the A string and what I'd like you to practice is really tapping your finger, your second finger, on the A string. So really tap it so you hear that tapping sound on the fingerboard. If you don't hear a tap, it might be that you don't lift up your fingers high enough. So imagine you have a little string and you pull this finger up and then let it go like that. It springs back and that is your tapping. There we go. Do the same with the second and third finger. So lift up your third finger really high. Imagine this little rubber band pulling your third finger up and then let it go. Bing. It bings back and it gives you a little tap there. How hard can you tap it? Good. Same with the fourth finger. So lift up that pinky as high as you can and let it spring back. Good exercise. Give your arm a little well-deserved rest because that is really tiring for your arm there. But good practice. I suggest we practice that one more time. So place your first finger. Lift your fingers up really high and let them spring back so you get the tapping sound. That's it. Now place your second finger. Do the same thing with the third finger. Very good. Place your third finger. Now tap your pinky. So pull it away really far and let it spring back. Oh, awesome. Now your pinky, it doesn't really matter if it doesn't come down on its fingertip, like the other fingers should be on their fingertips, shouldn't they? But your pinky can also go flat. It doesn't really matter. Like that. So your version there. Right. That's enough left finger practice. If you need to just take a break and relax that arm, give it a good swing because that is hard work. So you see, we're pushing the boundaries a little bit here today. We're going to do our next, our separate exercise today. And what I'd like you to do is to place your bow on any string, it really doesn't matter, um, in the middle of the bow. And now I'd like you to lift up your right elbow up and you see your bow goes to a lower string. Now drop your elbow down and let it go all the way up to E. And do that a couple of times. Lift your elbow up. So it's the elbow that starts the movement, not your wrist or your fingers even. So it's the elbow that does it. There we are. Just get some awareness in your elbow. How does your elbow guide the bow across the strings? Keep on breathing as you do that. There we are. Lovely. Smashing. Very good exercise for you to do. Now then, our scale today is a G major scale. So we're going to start on the G string and we're going to play all our fingers up. Fourth finger on the D and then we'll go down again. If you're a more advanced player, you know what to do. Pick a different G scale, one of your choice. You might do a two octave G scale or a G major scale in three octaves. You might do it separate bows or slurred, your version, okay? I'm going to play with um, a, just a one octave G scale. We're playing every note twice with long bows. One, two.
a G major scale. I'll tell you how to do it. It's just like the D major scale, like we did it yesterday, and there's an, there is a separate video on the D major scale on this channel as well. I released it earlier this week. I'll put the link to that D scale in the description below. The G scale is exactly the same as the D scale, except it starts on a G string and then it moves on to the D string after that. So let's play G scale one more time and make your bows as long as you can. Here we go. One, two. next and we're playing every note once with long notes and then at the end we'll play the whole arpeggio over again. Ready? And scales now well done very good all right so we've come to our improvisation section next you may remember that yesterday we did some copycat exercises and we're doing that again today except we're going to make it only slightly more challenging okay so we're starting easy and then we'll make it a little bit harder listen carefully so my question is which string am I on Can you play that? I'll play it again for you so you can check what you just played. And that was on the E string, of course. Now listen to this. again so you can check your answer and I was on the D string this time so if you find it tricky to remember the rhythm just say in your head while I play long 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 short short long and I think when you do that it makes it easier to remember so let's try this one next your go and if you've done it correctly you were on the G first and then D A 
bit tricky, wasn't it? Or maybe you say, oh no, it's not tricky at all. A, 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 E. Now then, for a little bit more of a challenge, why don't we try this? Ooh, so I was playing D and then one on D, D and one on D. So it should have sounded like this. Do one more. Did you manage that? Because that was a bit more challenging today, wasn't it? I played E and then one on E. Let's play that one once again. Wow, I'm so pleased you got that. Well done, very good. If you didn't quite make it today, please don't worry because next week we'll be practicing that again and we'll explore a little bit more how improvisation might work. And as you go along, you practice and you will start to feel more comfortable. The fact that you join in is a major bonus, so well done. So well done today, you've been properly warmed up now. Why don't you play your normal, regular stuff next? And while well, yesterday you played your favorite tune, why don't you start with your most challenging tune today? That would be awesome. I very much look forward to seeing you again next time, but for now, goodbye. <laughs> Thank you.